Another Married Woman came out in 1978, around the time when films like Taxi Driver and Annie Hall was kind of showing how New York can be one of the best places to make films. And this is definitely one of the, one of the films of that wave. And although now most people don't really remember about it, back then it was genuinely extremely critically praised. It was nominated for Oscars. Roger Ebers said it was one of the best films of the 70s. And that was, I guess that was really the main recommendation for me. The fact that Roger Ebert actually put it in one of his top 10 films of the 70s. So I watched it. And... I looked up on the internet to see what the reaction was from the mainstream nowadays, and nowadays I feel the fi the film does get a bit of a backlash, and I get why. But here's the thing: I I just like '70s New York films. I don't know why. And the and while watching it, I acknowledge all the flaws of the film. It has not aged well at all. Um, if anything, like the re the film is filled with characters who are cynical beyond belief. There's not a single character who's just happy or just normal. There's not a single normal person in here, in here or anybody who's just like, you know, going to flow with life. Everybody's depressed or sad. They're divorced. They're, you know, they feel betrayed. They're cynical. They're always sarcastic. Everybody's kind of a jerk. And the, f the style of the film is so 70s, from the music, from the lighting, from the cinematography. Um, and just especially when it all comes together, and in, especially when it's nighttime, it almost feels like a retro porn film. It really does. It doesn't, at a certain point, like certain moments where it's getting slightly kinky, or it's getting slightly more sexual, and, or slightly more arousing. The film stops feeling like a movie, and it actually feels like a porn porno. And I can see how people can get turned off by it. I can see how people can watch this film and say, you know what, this is just way too cynical for me. Or they can say, this feels way too aged and, you know, just not so of its time to the point where it doesn't feel like it's coming to the new age um, in a very flowing way. I can totally denounce all that though. Um, here's the thing. I don't care if a style feels aged. Like, like the films from the 30s and the 40s, they all feel aged. But the reason we come back to them, the reason we still watch them, is because the themes, the characters, still feel so real even to this day. And an Unmarried, Unmarried Woman is definitely a film in which the themes are still relevant, They're, they still feel emotional, the characters are so real, and you know what, the cynical part, let's face it, people are cynical, people are cynical, people most, most of the time are jerks, unless you're a Mormon, and in that case you're just a nice guy, um, and, and I have met some really, really nice Buddhist people, but you know what, Out of, outside of that, most people are jerks, they're sick, they care about themselves, they're mostly depressed because life is depressing, and I'm one of those people, you know? So, I don't really mind the cynical people aspect. In fact, the film is so filled with these interesting, just really, at times, very normal conversations, but it's, so, it's filled with such detail and such natural fluidity that it becomes interesting in itself, the cynicism feels like everyday cynicism. It doesn't feel like it's for, it's trying to be cool or, you know, snappy. It's just people being depressed and sad, and maybe they're jerks, maybe they're self-centered. But it feels, it, because, because it is so natural, it just feels real. And because of that, it's very effective. It just makes the whole film much more three-dimensional. Um, and I love the style of the film. I love this, you know, dirty, gritty, 70s New York type of style. That's why I love Taxi Driver. That's why I love Annie Hall. And this film, it, it Un Unmarried Woman is still a great looking movie. Yes, it does look like a 70s film, but like, fuck it. It looks like a 70s film. It looks great. And the music is something, like, it's, 
in between something that Charles Mingus would make and something that you would hear from a 70s retro porn. Like, it's very brassy, but there, it's, there, it's, there's a real sleaziness to it. It's great. It can be loud at times, but I love it. It's great music. Turn it up, you know? Um, the acting really is the main part of the film. And yes, the dialogue does help the characters and the actors to really perform their best, but the acting is fucking amazing. Jill Claiborne plays probably one of the most authentic portrayals of a depressed woman I have ever seen in my whole life. And, you know, I'll say this. I'm not a woman, so maybe this is not the best portrayal. Maybe I'm talking out of my ass. But, you know, I've seen my mother being depressed. I've seen my aunt being depressed. I've seen women being depressed, you know, women of that age. This kind of feels right. This feels very accurate. They're emotional. Small things irritate them. They feel... You know, they hate so many people and hate so many things, but at the same time, they feel guilty about something. Maybe they feel guilty about the hate. Maybe they feel guilty about the fact that maybe the situation that brought that, brought that hate is their fault. You know, all this really complex, depressing issues are so well portrayed in these performances. Sometimes, you know, even the smallest emotion, like... You know, annoyance. You can see it in her face. Like, the first time you... When um, the main character learns that her husband has been cheating on her, the expression on her face isn't anger. It isn't, you know, sadness. It's, it's more like... It's more... There's this emptiness to it. To the, And that's really what... How people would react to certain, you know, sudden big things. They just don't know how to react to it, so they, so they just stare blankly, you know? It's so it's such a big deal. So, you know, even like the smallest touches, she manages to pull it off and make it all so authentic and real and gritty. And it's just a great performances, and overall, it's just all great performances. The daughter is fucking amazing, and the character of that daughter... I don't give a shit if you think that character is too you know, cynical or whatnot. That's how teenagers fucking act. Not all teenagers, but when a teenager teenager thinks that she's he or she is slightly intellectual, that's how they act. They act like fucking sarcastic motherfuckers. That's how I act. Um and, you know, the themes of divorcing, um, marriage life, sexual life, family life, all of this is so real. And not and the great thing about the film is that it doesn't take size and it doesn't sugarcoat anything. It realizes the situation is real and it just goes with it. Life goes on. The husband tries to come back, but the wife says no. That's how it happened. That's how shit happens, man. And you know, and the acting, obviously the acting, the the way it's filmed and the lines are really the things that make those themes stand out. And the film is very funny too. There are a lot of really quotable lines here. Whether it's, you know, like, oh, that's not my, th oh, she's not a, oh, that's not a woman, she's my therapist. Or, what's that line? And there's just so many great fucking lines in here that I just love it. Um, and maybe because all of that, you know, all of that authenticity, all, all of that grittiness, all of that just grand, great filmmaking, the film feels human. And that's really the main thing that these films should go for. It should feel human. It should feel like something that would happen to any of us. And maybe because of that, I think this is a great film. I think, quite frankly, I think it's a masterpiece. It's just... A film that doesn't really have a climax. It's more about the beginning and the end of a tragic part of one's life. You know what? I enjoy those kinds of movies, especially if it has snappy dialogue. No, no like authentic, cynical dialogue. You know, that's, that's how life works. Fuck it, man. It's just another film that tells you that life sucks. But when you see it from the other, other point of view, it's pretty fucking entertaining. Another married woman? Masterpiece. Bye.